Welcome to the VHS Vault. I'm your host, VHS Jace, and of course, the genius sitting next to me is Jason Roy Gaston. How are you? That's you, sir. You are a genius. Oh, hello. I thought there was somebody else on the show. <laughs> no. I'm doing fine. If I was any better, I'd be twins. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. Well, I'm really excited about this one because we spun this, I think, a few weeks ago. Yeah. And, you know, obviously, if you haven't seen from the title, guys, we're talking the great, to me, one of the classics, in my mind, a cult movie, Swamp Thing. Swamp um, Thing. You make and, my heart sing. Yes. Mm. Now, I I have very distinct memories of seeing this on VHS. In fact, when I went to the video store, I think it was, this was the cover I saw. Um, and being a prepubescent boy of about nine, I didn't mind me some Adrian Barbo. Some to, Adrian Barbo. Barbo. Uh, who was famously <laughs> one of the girls in Cannibal Run, right? driving the Lamborghini. Yeah. I, um, my first memories of her was Creep Show. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, made the same year. So every every time I see Adrian Barbo anywhere, that's the first thing I think of is, oh, it's the shrew from Creep Show. Yeah. <laughs> and she's all about plant life that year because she's all about plant life in this movie. And I believe in, in if I remember in Creep Show, that's the same segment isn't it the plant one no, no she was in the one about the thing in the crate ah yes she was the one who just kept she kept berating hal holbrook over everything yes, until he, until he right. fed her to the to the blood baboon I, yes I, I call it i don't know what it's called yes god that's a great movie i hope we spin that one day too i love creep show oh that movie <laughs> traumatized me as a child but also <laughs> the person that you see in front of you today <laughs> well, this film isn't without its trauma either. As a young boy oh, no. seeing that movie, it, it did rock me a little bit because, you know, I was probably eight or nine watching it. Um, and I'm all in. I'm not sitting there going, oh, I don't think that shot was actually reflective of where the character was. I was just going, what is this movie? What is going on? That thing is terrifying. You know what you did give me nightmares? And I'm spoiling way ahead there. The creature at the end. Yes. Literally traumatized me for years. <laughs> I'm just trying to find the image of the guy because it is a horrible looking monster. Oh, I'm right here. there with you. Nope. 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 That's, nope, not, nope. It. that's not it. That's, that's not, not it. it. That's not it. Either. You know what? I'm you giving up. We'll bring up the that. monster later. Well, Either way. That, let me tell you about my experience with Swamp Please Thing growing up. Um, whenever I was younger, we got like three television channels, two during the day, one that only showed up at night when the atmosphere was just right. But, um, we ended up getting the cable package, which took our channels from three to 10. So we were, we were doing very well. Channel two was Showtime mm. and Showtime was great because they would show movies and it had cursing in them. And that was the, the only time we ever got to see movies with cursing in them was whenever we saw them in movie theaters. And one of those movies that Showtime showed over and over and over again was Swamp Thing. And I just remember being utterly fascinated by this movie because to me it was, I, I grew up watching, you know, the, the creature from the Black Lagoon. And that's what I thought this was. I thought this was some kind of new version of the creature from the Black Lagoon, except this creature was nice. And I don't I don't know. I don't know what was going on through my head, but something about the journey that Alec Holland goes through in this movie just spoke to me as a kid. And, you know, the fact that he's not fixed at the end, he is exactly where he needs to be. Hmm. I don't know. I found that very I, that was quite a statement for me as I guess a nine, 10 year old boy watching these movies on showtime between the uh you know the other things i wasn't supposed to be watching but i watched anyway yeah absolutely i think what you're leading into something we'll get into it speaks to my age i thought we already did that i thought we already played that bumper no we have not we have not <laughs> you're thinking of yesterday guys let's be honest we tried doing this yesterday technical issues but anyway it was, it was my fault <laughs> i couldn't stop crying now Not background info movie, of this it's, film it's life they have to they have to take about 15 minutes to get me to stop crying before every show <laughs> that is true that is true we do have a a trauma export um expert standby who will come over at some point inject him with something in his neck and he'll be the jason we know and love 
It didn't. It didn't work yesterday. Actually, both of us were fine by the end of that. <laughs> this is obviously based on the Alan Moore source material run on Swamp Thing, which at the time of me seeing it, totally unaware of Alan Moore's version of Swamp Thing. I did not know that Swamp Thing was a DC comic book character probably until at least 2000, 2001. I just I found out in the late 80s when I read Watchmen and I got I obsessed as yeah. I opened up a comic book and I was like, is that a Swamp Thing from that movie whenever I was a kid? Did they buy Swamp Thing? Yeah. Hey, don't even get started in the confusion of me between Swamp Thing and Man Thing from oh. the, the Marvel. Like, did my head, did my little brain's head in big time. So, I was mostly just taken by the title of the Man Thing's book, Giant Sized Man Thing. Yeah, I was just like, wow, <laughs> he's giant sized. And then I Stop. opened it up, and I'm like, well, that's not what I was expecting at all. <laughs> he's like this big on the page. That's yeah. not giant. I was expecting something bigger. <laughs> now, this is an interesting film because who it's directed by, um, yeah. Jason. Yeah. Uh, one of the horror legends in my mind, Wes Craven. Absolutely. Um, and it's very interesting to see why he did this film at this point in his career. Yeah. Um, before this, he was probably best known for doing, well, Last House on the Left, uh, The Hills Have Eyes, Deadly Blessing. There were his three films he had done prior was, to doing this, this film. Uh... Was this post Nightmare on Elm Street or pre Nightmare on Elm this Street? This is pre. This is the film he did oh. just before Elm Street. But he was still a very uh, prolific horror uh, mm. director at this point, though. That's right. And he was brought. He was actually. I can't remember the executive name now. I did have it up before, but I rebooted my computer. Uh, Michael Usman. Usman, Michael Usman, had actually bought the property from DC. Now, the reason I mentioned this executive, he bought two properties from DC at the time. Yes, this and Batman. Batman. Which you can see his name is in the credits for Batman in the opening credit, uh, the opening yeah. sequence. So, you know, I mean, here's someone who was pretty young at the time who was actually had projected forward that these properties were worth investing in. The other thing we probably should take note of, at this time, comic books was kind of on the upward slide. We'd had Superman yeah. the movie and Superman 2 by this point. Yes, and uh, I do know that Alsman was very... He grew up in the uh, grim and gritty Batman era. That's when mm. he, got, he got into that. And he was very upset that most people were more aware of the campy Alan West version than they were of the grim and gritty comics and i will tell you right now i think that I, I think that adam west was brilliant as batman i i it's really a comedy will, show dude yes it's, i it's will go movie. i will die on that hill that no, adam west has this deadpan absurdism that just makes him iconic as batman it's like he's the only sane person there and he doesn't know anything around him is crazy i love that exactly but exactly. that's that's not who Altman saw batman as he wanted to see batman as the dark knight as you know as as we see him today yes and he wanted to do that i know he wanted to do batman first but whenever he looked at everything he thought that's gonna cost money i don't have money let's do swamp thing first because that and won't cost as much money we'll just dump a bunch of actors in the swamp and say <laughs> good luck don't let the alligators good luck 2.5 million dollars i believe was the budget or 4.5 yes. um and, uh, you know, I think they did very well with the budget they have. Now, Wes Craven, coming full circle back around to him, he was not aware of this property. It wasn't something he was chasing. He was offered this film. Not a lot of and I'll were give him kudos no. because he's not the immediate choice you would think of, but I think he was the right choice to what is a very – darkly comic sweet there's so much into this that i thought his style and his tone of the time was the perfect choice for this film and you know wes craven did not want to be pigeonholed as no. a strictly horror director either so he was looking for something different 100 percent. 100 later into his career he was he was trying to kind of break out of horror and do different things there's a movie he did 
um, I can't remember when it was, but it was very late in his career. It was called uh, Red Eye. Yes. It was not a horror movie. It was a thriller. Yeah, with um, uh, Scarecrow Cillian, in it. Cillian Murphy. Yeah, yeah Cillian Murphy. Cillian and, Murphy. Um, oh, was it Amy Adams? I can't remember who yeah. it was. He also it, did this very sweet. Movie too, and nobody ever talks about it. No, he also did this very sweet drama in the 90s as well. Uh, I feel like it started a couple of older actors. I'd have to look into it again. But, yeah, he definitely tried. Yeah. Um, you can't make horror as good as him unless you're talented and skilled. So, exactly. You know, he just unfortunately happened to be – that's what the studios were funding him for. But before all – well, and obviously he'd done three horror films. And when he was presented, he was very keen to take this on because, like you had said, he wanted that chance to kind of expand – and I thought he brought the right temperament of the horror element to it, the way he shot things, to making it a really fun, enjoyable movie to watch. Um, now, you know what? Let's move into the next segment because it's going to go into what I just said, I think. Let's absolutely. Now, let me just get to it. Producers uh, not really waking up here yet. All right. <laughs> kind of address the first time we've seen this in a way but i i do i want to talk about the the feeling i had when i first saw it was i didn't know whether i liked this film or not like i said it scared me a bit it it it, it, it played with me it was one of those films where i saw it but i was too afraid to go back to it it took me two or three years to go back to it because like, unlike you, who you could just turn the TV on and, and, and look at your TV guide and knew it was playing, I'd have to go back and, and, and rent this. And it always kind of like, oh, that movie kind of affected me. And and what I was talking about, and I found the picture now, I've just got to show it because... Uh, show the arcane pig I, wolf I, thing. I, oh, arcane is great, but, but <laughs> yes. Like, well, what is that? Oh, to like it's, uh, I work, I'm going to hook on Matata to moan. <laughs> no, I was actually thinking he's behind you on the left there. I think Mattel, yeah, I think Mattel stole someone's Grizzlaw. <laughs> Is it not? I mean, the hair's pretty close. You've got to admit, right? <laughs> You've got to admit. But, you know, and that's when it gets cheesy. But there's a lot to kind of talk about this film. But the, the, the first time yeah, was on, not a great on. experience. Hold on. That's when it gets cheesy. That <laughs> come on. Oh, I'm very forgiving on this film. Swamp Thing was a guy in a wetsuit that was painted green with some stuff on it. It was a good wetsuit. It was a, a. It was fine. I mean, it was for the budget. It was fine. But I mean, come on. This movie was very. It was very aware of how 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 campy it was. Yeah, that's true. It is very true. It's just. Yeah, it's campy and it's aware of its campiness, but I think the next level from campy is cheesy, and that's where you yeah. get really. But it's a it's a product of its time, and I'm hyper aware of that now. So, but the first time you saw it, Jason, this is what I want to dig into: Were you smitten by it? Were you disturbed by it? Where was your head at the first time you watched it? The first time I watched it, I loved it. I I was into into horror at a very young age. And I've, I've always been into superheroes either. And I guess my, my young little dumb mind couldn't make the connection that this was horror and and superheroes at the same oh, time. Oh, I never got it the first time this was a and superhero so from at all. I, I didn't make that connection, but subconsciously, I guess I did because I was fascinated by it. And as I said, Showtime would show this thing three or four times a week. And then after mm. a while, it started falling off to where it would only be once every week or once every two weeks. And mm. every time it was on TV, I would watch it, and I loved it. And I, I, my cousins who were living with us at the time, they would sit down and watch it with me. Uh, so from the very beginning, I loved this movie, and that was something I was afraid of whenever I revisited it, because I honestly, I have not seen this movie since the early 80s. I thought, is this going to be stupid? Is this going to be something that I used to love, but then I watch it again and I don't love it? I still love it. I think it's a good movie. Me too, and you've kind of let the cat out of the bag. Let's move on to the next section. I really need to go over your show notes so I remember when to say things. <laughs> 
That's I'm all just, good. I'm You're not the only one on the channel, mate. Right? <laughs> You're not the only one on the channel. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Like so, after rewatching this, and you know, and I'm talking today, like literally when we when we rewatched it, I was shocked at how charming it was. Yes, this film has an inbuilt charm to it that I wasn't expecting when I rewatched it. And there were things that I really, really appreciated watching this again that I had never really picked up on before. Um, some good things and some bad things, Jace. So give us your overall like you kind of have already, haven't you? That you went back yeah. and you love it again. So let's let's get into the movie, because that's what we talk about. Okay. The the one thing I forgot, Jason. Ray Wise is in this film. Yes, he is. The great Ray Wise. Now, Ray Wise is probably best known as Laura Palmer's father. It's probably his most iconic role, uh, for me anyway. I think globally that's what he's known for. Though he's a he's a very accomplished actor who's been some great things. Uh, good night, good luck for George Clooney. He was great in that. Great There's movie. a slew of other things. I remember he here he is miscast. Movie. You think he's miscast? Yeah. I really? found Doc Holland. To be a bit creepy and a bit pushy. Okay, I'm with you right there. I, I like, think that this is, he's not just a borderline harasser. This man is a full on sexual harasser. And if I was Adrian Barbeau, I would have been Adrian Bargon by this point. And yes, mm. I'm going to have a, a million more of those as we go on. But yeah, he, he is super creepy. And especially whenever um, Adrian Barbeau's character thinks that he's married. I think at one point or another, she could have she could have gone from the shrinking violet, like, oh, isn't it nice I'm getting some attention from this guy, to, uh, yeah. Buster, wait a second, no, you're yeah. not allowed to do that. She does do that. She pushes him back, like, what about your wife kind of thing. But that kind of dragged out too far. It's like yeah. it's literally 10 minutes afterwards until we find out where the sister goes, oh, my dad on the wall. Um, and then she's like, oh, okay, he's not married after all. Doesn't doesn't forgive the fact that he's predatory Yes, he's early in this predatory. film. This is a guy um, who would have been obliterated by the Me Too movement. Oh, and rightfully so. Rightfully so. You do not approach him. And it wasn't even like there had been time. No, I'm going to get this far away from you, like touch your arm, show you these flowers, and then we're going to go on a boat ride. Yep. Hey, I'm, I'm just gonna, gonna give you a bunch of crap about orchids and hope and hope that I get some later. I mean, that's his yeah, that's basically. His yeah. But his science, the whole science around it, I really like Jason. I love the idea of merging plant life with with human life. Yeah, sure. Or but making when and Ivy does it. Batman goes and punches her. Yeah, I know. But I love hey. I'm a big Poison Ivy fan too, especially yeah. Harlequin animated My Poison gosh, Ivy. Love so her. Have you seen the Valentine's uh, Day episode yet? I did. I did. <laughs> Amazing. I don't know why we're not doing the show on Harlequin because that's an incredible show. Because Either I, way. Because I'm a teacher and I can't. No, that's right. You can't. You can't. We can talk about it on this show, which is rated yeah. R. And if you're watching this, you shouldn't be watching the kids. It's, Go it's to a bed. hard R too. Very hard yeah. R. Especially Very hard R. Day episode. So, yes, yes, actually, I know exactly what you're talking about. But, you know, Sorry, I really dug the science in it. I like the idea of, of of that. And I like the, okay, it's neon green goo and, you know, but I love the idea just a drop of it creates an explosive. Yes. Though, um, and I, I, thought, I thought that was wonderful. I also love how they were like, it would grow quickly and merge into its own environment, like the one on the table and such. So I'm in at this point from the science perspective. I'm like, I can go with this. Yeah, sure. I mean, it's it's not called science faction. It's science fiction. So I'm all no. like, sure. It, this gr growing green stuff makes plants. That's mm. all I need to know. Thank you. And you know what else is great at the beginning of this film, Jace, is the fact they introduced the villain straight off the bat. Within yes. the first 30 seconds, we're seeing those team of mercenaries moving through the swamp. Does, does, so, no, does no law... Uh, does no law enforcement have jurisdiction in the swamp, though? That's all I want to know, because it just seems like to me it's a it's a anarchist hellscape where you know anybody can just do anything they want and nobody. Yeah. 
it, they definitely sell it in the film as it's a lawless land yeah. where anything can kind of happen. In fact, the science group with all the military guys there and the and that there, uh, you know, it is sensed that, oh, we're in the middle of nowhere and this is a super secret experiments that we're doing here, which it is. Um, but the main guy, the, the, he reminds me of the guy from Jurassic Park, you know, the Ooh, first okay. Jurassic Park, the trainer That's with the big hat. Yeah. Um, like I watched it again and went, oh, that's right. We're going to get this rubber mask bit coming up, <laughs> which was kind of great. So uh, anyway, I'm, I'm kind of going. Yeah, it's it's like a smashing of Batman, Jurassic Park, and Mission Impossible. And I, All I'm in all one. For it. Yes. All one. But, you know, I'm kind of going back about the cast. Here. Adrian Barbeau, what did you think of her, of her in this movie overall? Well, I, I love Adrienne Barbeau. I, I think she's great in everything she does. I don't think she was miscast. I think that she was, oh, what's the right word for it? She plays a woman who is out of her element, but who is very quick to adapt. Competent. Yes. And it's Competent great. Is the word I'm looking for. Very competent. Yes. And that's what why she works. I, like, I just got to say, she pulls the best performance in this film by yeah. a country mile. Um, she so, really and and she grounds this movie. Though. Sorry? She doesn't really have that much competition, though. No, not really. Though there is, there is a big shout out to somebody that has to be mentioned. But with her, I thought she was really great because she, she's beautiful. She's sexy. But there's no fooling her. There's no oblivionist to her. She's hyper aware. And she sells that all the way that she knows exactly the situation she's in. And I really appreciated that. I, I felt that there are times that she had to play the damsel. She still sold it well. Um, so I'm a big rap. I think this is probably her best performance that I've ever seen her in, to be honest with you. Um, oh, okay. I, I can't think much more that I've... Oh, she was great in that creep show segment. Don't get me wrong. She, she was, yeah, I was going to say, I think I think creep show is definitely her best comic book mm. movie mm. appearance. But yes, mm. this... Oh, that's this interesting, was, yeah, because it is a comic book. book. Yeah, yeah. Yes. But who I love in this is Louis Jordan, who I absolutely, playing the role of Arcane, he was so deliciously love him chewingly evil and i just i loved it from the very beginning to the very end do you think he's is he playing want. i feel he was a french guy but he was one of those french guys that lived in vietnam you know how they had the <laughs> french communities that lived in vietnam like i'm thinking apocalypse now you know there's a scene deleted scene where they go to this french plantation and they know at the, the end of the scenario and there's just certain mannerism. He never raises his voice, I don't think, in this film, does he? I don't believe so, but I... I don't be. even think he goes, go get him! Like, he is very measured throughout the way. You will go and it now, makes him or there creepy. will be trouble. Yes, that's it. That's There's this old com there's this old comedy routine, and I wish I remember who said this, but um, it, it might have been Daniel Tosh. I don't know. But he says there's a big difference between somebody who walks up to you on the street and says, I'm going to kill you right now! Uh, or somebody who walks up to you and says, I'm going to kill you right now. Yeah. One of them's scarier than the other one. The one who's measured and quiet is far more terrifying than the one who just goes overboard. And I think that's why Arcane is such a great villain in this movie. Because yeah, he, is he, is. he is quiet. And whenever he says, I'm going to kill you, you believe him. Oh, and yeah, 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 absolutely. He is a serious threat in this movie, and you feel it all the way through, which is not always the case for villains. However, he makes some of the dumbest decision later in the film. But well, we there's so that. many people making dumb decisions yeah. in this movie. Honestly, who can keep track of who's making yeah. it? <laughs> but there's one egregious one. He's really, and we'll get to that. But Dick Durock, MVP man, he has to play Swamp Thing, right? Yeah. He's in this rubber suit all day long. Did you also see him out of the rubber suit at the beginning of the film? The guy who gets off the boat and into the plane where Adrian Barbo oh, gets off. I did not realize that. That is him. So he's the dude um, who moped out and then... Uh, yeah, he paled. <laughs> yeah. I thought he did a great job with he someone who's did. clearly had limited experience, acting experience. He really sold Swamp Thing for me. 
He did. Yeah. And the, 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 they were going to have Ray Wise uh, do the speaking role in the suit. And then they were going to have, I, I can't remember, the, you just said his name and I can't remember. It. Uh, Dick Dur- Durog. The yeah, they were going to have yeah. him do the stunts. But then they were like, well, physically, they're, they don't match. So we can't, we're going to have to choose one or the other. Let's just get the stunt guy to play Swamp Thing all the time. And they just, I there, guess they, there is footage of the internet of Ray Wise. Wise. What? Yeah. Either way, there is uh, footage of Ray Wise in the, in the, in the uh, actual suit on the internet. So they went as far as actually filming some scenes with Ray Wise in the actual suit. And I'm glad they changed it. Because Dick Durrock, I think what he does really well, he does his movements, which feels very comic accurate to me. There's moments when he turns, he's positioning himself the right way. I just feel the, you know, that Frankenstein's monster element of Swamp Thing, I thought he did really well. Um, his attempt at doing some of the sweetest moments, the more philosophical moments of Swamp Thing, man, not great, but still, I thought he did an excellent job because really, he's he's the lead. Ray yeah. Wise is a supporting actor in this. It's Dick Dura as Swamp Thing who's really the lead of this movie, um, besides Adrian Barbo, of course. Yeah, so, good. yeah, I I I thought he was wonderfully surprised. He did a really good job. Someone like that in in the current like situation where we have better effects or whatever, he could still pull off a physical swamp thing and and the suit right let's get in we we're talking digger at the suit yes there are times when he's bending down and you see the fold of the rubber yes. around his back and stuff like that but overall man that suit still holds up for me hey you I, know for the budget i think it looks fine i mean yeah you can sit there and go <laughs> rubber suit but you know what you could also look at the old king kong and go <laughs> puppet yeah. yeah, we know it's not a real monkey. We know it's not a real, you know, we know Tommy Lee Jones isn't jumping off of a real bus. And we know that Swamp Thing is not an actual plant slash yeah. animal that's living yeah. out in the swamp. It's the suspension of disbelief. Mm. Yeah, we can look and say, oh, that's kind of cheap looking. But on the other hand, yeah, this was kind of a cheap movie. And it, it works for what mm. it is. It works. And I, I fully bought it. You know, there's some really, really sweet moments in this movie. And... And really, one of the sweetest moments is this is really kind of hit me harder than I thought it was going to, because I thought it was so beautifully sweet. He's had his arm cut off, and he yeah. delivers the flower to Adrian Barbeau, and I'm going, that shouldn't work. That scene shouldn't work, but it does. Oh, my gosh. I loved the whole, whenever she looks at his missing arm and mm. says the dumbest thing possible, does it oh. hurt? Oh, yes, that's right. My and wife then, laughed at that one. Yeah. <laughs> and then he just responds back, only when I laugh. Yeah. And it's so goofy. And it, yeah. it's almost like a dad joke. But yeah, It is, but they yeah, both yeah, laugh yeah. and it works because it I shows know, connection. I think, she realized, I think she realizes, wow, that was a dumb question. <laughs> Does it hurt when your arm gets cut off? Well, yeah. Well, how do you know it hurts? <laughs> cut off. Or where would it hurt? In my arm. <laughs> the suit yeah for me i'm like you know what even if they'd made that 10 years later that suits for that period of time i'm standing by i'll yeah. die on that i, I have no problem with it i think it looks just fine now one of the main bad guys and i think this is the main henchman this dude <laughs> who's a mixture of uh rambo and one of our co-hosts ricardo perone who's on the channel that's what it looks like. <laughs> um, he is unstoppable as a henchman, and he's pretty damn evil. And I didn't mind him at all. Apparently, though, he was extremely difficult to work with. Really, mm-hmm. really, because he—I don't know. To me, he physically—he did not look that threatening to me. He—he he looked like one of the first two people who would get killed off in a Friday the Thirteenth movie. Oh yeah. Oh, I, I don't know if it was just the curly hair. He, I don't. I'm not. Oh gosh, I don't want to. I don't want to be that kind of person. But he was kind of, he was kind of homely, but not like in a threatening way. He's kind of like homely in that goofy uncle kind of way. Yeah, he didn't look. Yeah, you're right on that thing. Yeah. And let's face it, he'd watch for. Well, someone in that movie watched First Blood because yeah. he's he is trying to have that Stallone <laughs> look at this point. I think he. I think the actor watched it because it just he seemed so removed from everyone else like some people yeah. in this movie took it a little bit more seriously than others 
And I think he, he was like, white it's, too a, seriously. It's, it's, a, it's a comic book. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm just going to be Rambo. <laughs> Very good. We also have in this film, surprisingly, Steve Urkel appears yeah. in this film. <laughs> Um, no, Reggie Batch, young Reggie Batch, who yeah. he, he was great in it. You know what I mean? He's very mysterious. Happens to always be in the right place at the right time, that kid. But, you know, um, yeah, he was good. Except I've forgotten where I thought, shit, they killed the kid. Remember he's floating in the boat? And I'd forgotten because it had been almost 40 years, like you said, so I've seen it. I'm going, hang on a minute. Did they kill the kid in this movie? Yes, Thankfully. But he yeah. got better. He got better. But he got better because of Swamp Thing's powers, which was yeah. kind of really cool. So I, I, I thought gotta, he was yeah. I gotta I gotta say something about Jude. I, I honestly did not think it was that great of a performance. But I'm gonna I'm gonna preface this. And I know he was just a kid, mm. but to me it almost seemed like they cast Jude, this uh, Reggie Bass. Reggie Bass? Yes. Reggie Bats. Bats. Reggie Bats. It seems like to me they cast Reggie Bats into a part that was meant to be played by somebody much older. And I'm really? Talking, I'm talking like a man in his like 50s or 60s. Because it just seems like every line of dialogue that came out of this kid's mouth sounded like something an old man would say. Mm. And it gave, I don't know, it, it was kind of, it was so strange. For First it's, of all... It's why is this 14 or 15 year old kid manning this convenience store all by himself? Um, how does he, they said, you know, I, one of my favorite lines in there is, do you have a gun? Ma'am, what kind of place do you think this is? Of course I've got a gun. Um, <laughs> it is Florida. Yeah, it is Florida. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's uh, interesting. You say that. I wonder if it was written at that age, Jason, and, yeah, an executive's gone. We need a kid in this film. It's a superhero film. We've got to have a kid in here to help well, you do know sell the movie. Kill off this character, right? And swap thinking him, bring him back. Uh, yes, give me. Yeah, a we're right. good. We're good. As for the plot, the plot is functional and it works well. It's a very simple plot. They don't go too over the top, and I think that's a smart choice for this one because there's a little bit of exposition, but it doesn't try to go into the massive backstory of Arcane or. A more backstory about Dr. Holland. It, it very much playing out in the moment, and I kind of appreciated that because really at the end of the day, you've got somebody coming to investigate and support a scientist. There's an accident. He turns into Swamp Thing. They kind of together. Bad guy wants a drug, turns into a monster. They have a battle, end of film. That's the plot, and I appreciate its simplicity. I really did. It um, is, yeah. It's a very simple, you know, point A, point B, point C movie. No need for flashbacks. No, no, no need for, you know, character motivations that don't serve mm. the plot. I, I appreciate that as well. And I think that's why I liked it so much as a kid, so I could keep up with it. And, you know, there's a great little chase scene in the swamp later in this film, which I really liked. Yes. Um, you know, even got the Wilhelm scream out of in that uh, scene as well. Yeah. There yeah, were which was stock sound effects in this movie. Yes. Whenever the list, okay, go back to the movie, and whenever the bad guys show up at um, Jude's store, mm. I swear they use a sound effect that just stops suddenly. Yes, and there's, there's like a split second of silence, and then the then the soundtrack kicks in again. Now yeah, I think wow, the spent a whole two dollars and thirty cents on the sound library. Yeah, I think the sound designer may have been doing a bit too much coke at that period. So it is the <laughs> 70s, 80s, so probably what was going on. But, um, yeah, if this the, the the three tenements of this movie come down to Arcane, Adrian Barbo and Dick Durock playing Swamp Thing for me. Yeah. Um, and what really sold me with Arcane, I know we're going all over the place, but this is the show, guys. This is what we do. Get used to it. Get used to it. Is this scene in particular, Jason? I really dug this because it set up the fact that Arcane respected Dr. Holland, thought he was a genius, um, and I and, and also showed it showed how eloquent he is and how measured yeah. of he is. It was a great setup scene for you know the eventual monster he becomes, um, I and I thought the instinct by Wes Craven, yeah. And I thought the instinct by Wes Craven not to show him being completely evil from the beginning was a smart thing. I felt through the film, every time he saw Arcane, he was becoming more and more of a dastardly villain, you know? Yeah. 
um, which I absolutely loved. Um, standout scenes for me, Jace, were the the actual lab where it goes down and things yes, explode. Great. Yes, and including one of the greatest man on fire scenes I have ever seen. That is a scene that stuck with me whenever I was a kid, is watching Alec get caught on fire and running to go get in that swamp. I just, I don't know why. One I shot. Of that. Yeah. Oh, did I lose you, Jace? I think I've lost my co-host. She was so excited about a uh, swamp thing. He's actually paused in time. So I might just remove him and try to add him back in. And see if he's coming back. He is not coming back, guys. The, sh the movie affected him so much that we lost him. Oh, here he goes. I think is he back? No, he's not. Guys, I'm going to take it from him. Uh, no, 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 no. We're not ending the show now. Don't you try to do that. Nobody ends this show but me and you occasionally. Mm. Anyway, uh, yeah, Alec getting set on fire and running into the swamp stuck with me for years. I don't know why. It was a superhero was, origin, and I loved it. It was one shot, Jace. It yes. was one shot. So, I, and I watched it a couple well. of times, and I'm like, and and I think it was that's not back in the day when that fireproof gel that they use now. So they were using old school methods of keeping the flame off you to do that. Yeah, I could just see Ray Wise reporting to set, and Wes, Wes Craven hits him in the face with kerosene. It's like, what's this for? Oh, you'll find out. <laughs> you'll Run find out. The water. <laughs> Creepy Ray Wise in this film. Either way, that, I, now if there's one thing that is probably the most problematic thing in this film for me is probably the fight scene at the end. Yeah, it's a not little the janky. best filmed and it is really jaggy and that's yeah. the problem i mean there's points where uh, arcane is literally just slashing up water did it's, you see that bit he's just bashing water yeah it's it's a very <laughs> shatner-esque fight scene yeah. i just yeah i wanted to, I, see yeah. The, I wanted to hear the dun 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 if someone's out there, if they could just edit in a shot of a tree and then a gorn poking his head out and then going back, splice that into there would be perfect. Yes. But yeah, yeah. Look, the creature design, which initially I believe was supposed to be a werewolf, um, because of things <laughs> like the Howling and uh, American Werewolf in London, they actually changed it to be that thing that we Ooh. saw earlier. This thing. Evil Pumbaa. Timon. Timon. Let's break it down. It's Where got a bit of possum Timon? happening, I reckon. It's got a bit of possum in there. It it's got a no bit of way. wild boar. It's got a bit I of... He farts like Timon does. <laughs> See, that's the other thing that would have worked here, a musical scene. Exactly. Would have been perfect with them doing that classic, you know, that One song thing. from... I'm going to Makuna Yatanas. Come here. <laughs> You Look, better start worrying. <laughs> this film is delightful, guys. If you it haven't is. seen it, you have to measure expectations. And I find this is the problem with a lot of people, Jace, when they go back and watch older films. They expect the quality of movie to look and feel the same as a modern film. Now, you cannot expect that from older films because it was a different time, different tools were being used, different approaches to storytelling were being done. So for me, my only advice when you're watching things like Swamp Thing or any of the other movies we talk about that are older, just understand and measure expectations and just be in the moment. And I think you'll find a lot of people will get a lot more out of it if they're able to do that. Absolutely. And you can see it as part of the charm. You know, you can watch the Maltese Falcon today and wonder why it's not in color, or you can just appreciate the charm of black and white and how much it adds to the noir. You mm. can watch The Wizard of Oz and wonder why we don't get this great big sweeping CGI fly through of the Emerald City, or you mm. can appreciate the artistry of the matte paintings. Mm. Don't be a douche. Exactly. Just go with it. Yeah. I mean, a story is a story, whether it's painted, whether it's spoken, 
whether it's on film, just be in the moment with the story, absolutely. So, you know, there is a lot more you could dig in about the plot, but I'm afraid, Jason, the more we dig in with the plot, the more some of the gaping holes start to open up, and I don't want to do that with this film. No, because you can analyze something to death, and we don't want to. We don't want to kill Swamp Thing. It's too wonderful. And, and look at the Marvel fans have done to Marvel. So exactly. you know, look at the Star Wars fans have done to Star Wars. Exactly. You know, don't over overanalyze. But yeah. look, I recommend it. I reckon you definitely recommend it. Jay, I, I recommend it wholeheartedly. I loved it. And you know what? We know that James Gunn is actively developing and making a. I don't, I don't want to call it a remake, but they're doing their swamp thing. Yes. And so, he says it's going to be horror, which I'm all for. Do it. Do a horror movie. It should movie. be. Yes. It, it, it absolutely should be. Um, you know, body if horror. you. That's what this is. It's body horror. It is body horror. I mean, it is that uh, very Frankenstein influenced kind of movie. I mean, that's a big part of the character. There's the monster part, and then there's the intellectual side, which. Also, in defense of this film, there are moments where they really try to show the heart and philosophy and ethos of Swamp Thing. They try with a few scenes. They never quite pull it off to its potential. And I think the new film, they will anchor on there a little bit. But I, I still think in 1982, you're seeing... Oh, Jason, you froze. I can't hear you. The internet gods are angry. Well, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> I was just sitting here pretending like I could hear you, thinking it was on my end. And then I saw no. Your... So where did I get to? I don't know. I all right. I'm going to cut that bit again anyway. This oh, whole man. shit's going to be so much of this is going to cut up this week. <laughs> it's going to be like I'm just kind of re-editing the whole thing. Um, shit, where was I? I'll finish on the part where we said um, – Okay, I got it, I got it, I got it. Okay. There are moments in this that, even minuscule, there are moments where there is some really big things being said that we get the sense of Swamp Thing's, um, you know, ability to look at the world differently now, very profound kind of things. And, and I appreciate that, and I thought it was wonderful. So all in all, Jace, go watch it. Go find it. Go seek this movie out. And, you know, sit back with a bowl of popcorn and a cold drink and enjoy it. Yes, it's Beauty and the Beast. It's, uh, I don't really know if I would call it a love story, but it's definitely a story of somebody coming to somebody else's rescue and then that person that they rescued coming to their rescue. And it's a battle of good and evil, of right and wrong. And it's done in a very original and charming way. And I think that the I think that the campiness and cheesiness just makes it that much more charming. Fully, fully recommend. Absolutely. And you know what? If if you watch the whole film, because there's a moment at the end of this film, which you said in the beginning, Jason, which is so beautifully done. The choice of the main character at the end of this film is worth the price of admission alone, far as I'm concerned. Because it really says something, doesn't it? When he yes, makes the choice to go, I am where I need to be. It's yes. so it's wonderfully. A, it's done. a sense of peace and acceptance. Mm. You know, there's nothing wrong with me. I am, I am who I am. I am where I need to be. Good luck, Adrian Barbo, with that thing in the crate. Yeah, good luck. Good luck. And whether you know this or not, they did come back with a sequel, which I Jason, I never saw. I've never seen it either, but I've, I've heard that it is quite different. Quite different. Well, I believe Heather Locklear is in that one. I believe so. Um, so one day, maybe, I don't know, it might be on the wheel, which we'll be spinning we, next week. We have, to put the, we have to put it on the wheel. I think Absolutely. once we do a movie that's got a sequel, we need to put the sequel on the wheel. Absolutely. 100%. I think that is the way to do it. All right, guys. Thanks for watching this rather unique episode of uh, technically <laughs> unique episode of VHS Vault. Swamp Thing's a great movie. Go check it out, yeah. guys. And do the right thing by us, please. And if you like this 
and we have no re reason to think you would but if you do like watching us if you could like be a big deal for us if you could subscribe even bigger deal um it, it means two seconds of your time but means a lot to us and uh yeah you know comment below and 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 you know talk about it and 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 remind us that we're a couple of moronic buffoons down there Absolutely. we're all good with it yeah. all right i'm guys I'm told that i look like one of the dwarves from lord of the rings tell me which one do you think i am mm, 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 mm. i like to think mm. that i'm a thorin but some other people say i'm a gimli i don't know what do you think i come and, off more uh, like a low rent santa who's maybe been on the source a bit long and maybe has an addiction to donuts yeah perhaps perhaps i can see it yeah um, I oh, and, I can and uh, of course next week you know what's coming i know what's coming let yeah. jace without revealing the image i need the sound effect so you have to give me the sound effect oh sorry it's the wrong sound no that's that go. that's the other film yep. we are back people we are back talking friday the 13th we're in part three and as and a kid jace this was one of my favorites as a kid loved 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 this film so i'm so excited to revisit it and i'll be watching it again this week and next time we see each other we'll be talking friday the 13th part three in 3d can't wait uh, it's it's a movie how dare you we'll uh, cut that you? there <laughs> we'll cut that there how dare you <laughs> knowing that it's fucking a horrible it film ass. dude it, it is, is bad ass. and that's what i'm going to raise now is the fact that hey man i love this as a kid and shit, i haven't seen it in 30 years <laughs> no actually i will defend the last time i saw it and we'll talk about that now so basically i don't i'll play the intro and i'll put the thumbnail up i'll play the intro and we'll do it all right let me bring up my such a, uh... such a weird way to do a show Ooh, okay, now here are my here are my notes for Friday the Thirteenth. I didn't even use my notes in the end for. Okay, great. This is great. See, that's funny. I took like four notes for that movie, and I used yeah. every single one of them. <laughs> one of them. Well, uh, there's a thirty odd images that I have here. Oh my god! I went Ooh. nuts with this one because I just you know there was a lot. To okay, talk about. I'm gonna I'm gonna say this because I don't really want to use this line on the show because it's a little objectionable. But. Um, 80s movies that were made in 3d but they're only shown in 2d today they're my kink i love them because they're so stupid what is that offensive uh kink 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 that's your yeah. thing your thing know, is fine it's my thing okay i'll yeah, use my your, thing you use that thing because that that is a very valid point yeah it's like, a bit and it's something i wanted jaws to talk 3. about as well jaws 3 cracks me up because those 3d gags in 2d look so stupid they do they do and but and we'll, we'll do the show and we'll get into my defense um of those movies in 3d because they're completely different movies in 3d no oh, i'm sure there have you only, seen there was only one print that was known of that was in 3d and it was shown every year at this one movie theater i can't remember what it was but the movie theater closed down in 2006 and nobody knows what happened to the print wow it sucks that sucks they could do a 3d conversion on it though i think that'd be they fun. could they, they could all right let's do it there we go uh i suppose i better play the thing <clears throat> so i better go quiet oh, hang on. <laughs> 